welcome back the previous lecture we had talked about continuous functions and then subsets of continuous functions we have seen how polynomials and trigonometric polynomials are dense in continuous functions and so on in this lecture we are going to see a technique of regularization and cutoff which basically uh, it's a technique to make non-smooth functions smooth and this also gives the density of certain continuous functions and certain class of continuous functions in LP spaces. So we are also going to look at some dense subsets of LP spaces. So let's get into this technique. So this is precisely, so regularization basically means smoothening a function. Suppose you are given a function which is not smooth by performing some operation you can smoothen out the function and this you can do generally so this technique of regularization is generally for an entire uh, Euclidean set that is Rn or R and this technique can be restricted to proper subsets of the of Rn by using the cutoff technique and so on so we will see these things in this lecture So this technique of regularization that is smoothening process uh, was introduced by Lerae and Friedrich. This, this is done via the operation of convolution. So let's start with the operation of convolution. So if two functions f and g are in L1, then one can define this convolution operation. This in, so this f convolved with g is defined as integral over fx minus y g y dy this you can do for every x okay so here you see the integral is here is over y variable but there's a translation by x here and so the so the f convolved g evaluated at x is precisely this integral now this is uh, so we are i'm not going to get into all the details of this this is something you can find in um, you can do these things in exercise or whatever I'm showing. So refer to convenient books. First is that this definition is well defined by using Fibonacci theorem and the fact that the Lebesgue measure is translation invariant. So if you start with the double integral, or in in, in this case when I say double integral, one integral is over R n, right? So integral over R n and R n of this quantity integrated with both dx dy is uh, precisely this right you can change the order of integration and so on so this integral is over x variable this integral is over y variable this is independent of x variable here so you can separate it them separate them out and this is precisely the l1 norm of f and g so this tells you that for each fixed x the quantity that you're integrating here is actually integrable so this is a well-defined uh, quantity so if convolution g is well defined so some exercises that you can try doing is this convolution operation is commutative that is f comp uh, so f convolved with g is same as g convolved with f similarly the operation is also associative so right so f uh, convolved with g convolved h and uh, if convolved G convolved with H is all same, so associative is also satisfied. All this you please verify as an exercise. Another property about this is the Eng's inequality. So this is something similar to what you must have seen in uh, like your Holder's inequality, Minkowski inequality, and so on, right? So the Eng's inequality is corresponding to the convolution operation. So if P, Q, R are such that they satisfy this identity. So 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 1 plus 1 over R. Okay. Where both, uh, where all the three P, Q, R are uh, lying between 1 and infinity where 1 is included. So if F is in LP and G is in LQ, then F convolution G is in LR. And, and it satisfies this 
this inequality it is estimate so in particular if uh, p is between 1 and infinity f is in l1 g is in lp then f convolution f, f convolution g is in lp okay this follows from here so so this is again something which you can uh, go and uh, please try to find a proof and do it so this is something this is an estimate this is an estimate on the convolution of two functions and then another property about sub, uh, about the convolution is that if you have a function f and g f in l1 g in lp we have already shown that f convolution g will be in lp the support of the convolution is always contained in the closure of the support of sum of individual uh, uh, closure of the sum of individual supports okay so in particular if uh, f and g have compact support then the convolution will also have compact support okay so you can verify that uh, if this is compact this is compact sum of two compact sets closure is also compact okay so that is these are some properties of convolution and then finally one more property is uh, that it preserves smoothness that is how the regularization technique comes in it preserves smoothness in the sense that if you take a function which is k times differentiable compactly supported and g is an l1 low function then f convolution g is defined and this f convolution g is actually a ck function so you see you started with a k differentiable function you started with a function which is l just l1 function not even continuous right just l1 function then f convolution g is actually a k time differentiable function so this convolution operation is preserving the differentiability that you had on f though one of the function was can be nasty in fact you have this formula that the alpha partial derivatives of f convolution g is nothing but the alpha derivative of f convolved with g okay in uh, so this actually uh, commute so if g, if you add uh, notion of derivative for g as well then you also have this formula and so on so whichever whichever was derivative you can push the derivative to that derivative so this preserves because of th this is k times differentiable because even if you one of them is differentiable it will give the differentiability of the convolution so to so that's the nice property of uh, convolution that it preserves smoothness even if one of them is differentiable the convolution will be differentiable okay so these are the properties of convolution so with this let's um, look at a sequence of function called what are called the mollifiers so in one of the previous lectures we have we had uh, I think we had seen this function even one of you even in a presentation presented this function which is the function that which is um, which is different infinitely differentiable but is not analytic when we were doing complex analysis we were seeing such functions right that in the real situations you can have functions which are which are infinitely differentiable but not analytic and e power minus 1 over x uh, in the in the positive line and zero in the negative line was actually a function which was infinitely differentiable at zero but it's not analytic at zero it's an example that we saw already so this is this is actually constructed from so so from that example e power minus one over x it is e power minus one over x was a real valued function from r right r to r you can generalize this to rn using mod x okay you take any vector x you define the same function e power minus 1 over mod x and so on you can even do this so then you concatenate so you concatenate uh, functions like e power minus 1 over x from the left side from the right side 
so you can actually define so this is a function if you draw the graph of this you will see that in a ball of radius epsilon the function comes down to the function as a bump like and a hump kind of thing right like the like the camel hump hump kind of thing uh, from uh, in the ball of radius epsilon outside the ball of radius epsilon it it just smoothly falls to zero like the way e power minus uh, 1 over x was smoothly fall, uh, falling to zero right it's like that so you just take e power minus 1 over x from one side e power minus for instance uh, suppose we take the function e power minus 1 over mod x so from the positive side also uh, from the positive side also it falls to zero from the negative side also it falls to zero now if you just do this function upside down right so that's the kind of operation that you do here so this is a function where for each epsilon so where because the this is a function which is zero outside the ball of radius epsilon and within the ball of radius epsilon it is infinitely differential and smoothly falls to zero on the boundary of the ball okay so this is that kind of function this is a function on r and x is a element in r n so this is a function on r n so this happens from r n to r so for each epsilon you have a so nice uh, infinitely differentiable function okay and the c is the normalizing constant which basically normalizing constant is just introduced just to make sure that this integral of rho epsilon is one so just a normalizing constant so where c is precisely this quantity in fact if you see here this is precisely a similar function here where y is replaced with x over epsilon so if you replace y with x over epsilon you have epsilon square minus mod x square power minus epsilon square and this is a function which is supported in the unit uh, unit disk okay so this is um, and such a sequence is just example of the class of functions called mollifiers Mollifiers basically means if you know the English word mollify, mollify basically means to uh, basically means to uh, uh, make a I mean mollify is make a kind of uh, make a ha unhappy person or make a disagreeable person to make him agree to something or something right. Mollifying means to convince a person in a uh, convince a person right that's what it means something may you something is not agreeing to you something is not happy about you talk to him you convince him you give him the logic behind it reason behind it and you make him agree to it or uh, make, like make him come on board or uh, he's, he's, he's kind of unhappy or angry with you right you try to uh, pacify him right that's what uh, mollify means so here these are called mollifiers because these are uh, functions which will make a very bad function a, a bad behaving function and when we say bad behaving we mean in the sense of uh, uh, a function which is not smooth right uh, then this function can make a not smooth function smooth and so on okay so that's how the name mollifiers comes so if you look at the properties of this rho epsilon this rho epsilon are all non-negative by definition okay it's a function which is infinitely differentiable in rn and it's compactly supported you can see here the supporters in the epsilon ball it's support in the ball of radius epsilon centered at origin these are the sequence which is called mollifiers is also related to a really um, i mean this notion is related to what is called the dirac sequence or approximation of identity uh, which you might have come across in other i mean other related uh, math courses like ring theory functional analysis and and so on okay so just to make the rela uh, relation let's see what is dirac sequence and approximate identity if you have a, a sequence of functions on rn it is said to be a dirac sequence if one they are all non-negative so our rho epsilon was is satisfying this non-negative condition integral of rho k is one this we have not checked but you can go and check the c was introduced precisely to make this integral of rho epsilon one so the choice of c is for that 
so this row interval of this row epsilon is also 1 so it will satisfy this condition and for every given r and epsilon there is an n naught such that integral of r n minus the ball of radius r integral over that is less than epsilon this is this will also be satisfied in fact if you look at these uh, class of function these are functions which if you see see this is a function which is going to have an integral right area one if you think of integral as area they're going to have so all these functions rho epsilon are going to have area one but they are supported in an epsilon ball so as you make the epsilon smaller and smaller let's see, let's say you are tending epsilon to zero that means you are reducing the radius here so once you reduce the radius here the function has to be supported in the ball of radius epsilon should be zero outside so and should still be of area one so the area has to increase because once you reduce the length or width here in the bottom here then the area should be preserved as one so it should increase so the bump of the function will increase further so as epsilon goes to zero to preserve the area one this function will actually blow up to infinity at the point x equal to zero right more or less that's what happens here so dirac sequence means that if you look at uh, if you look at uh, dirac measure if you have seen a measure theory course then basically these are functions which will converge to the dirac measure in the measure sense okay basically these are functions which will converge to zero for every non-zero x and will converge to infinity at x equal to zero which is precisely the dirac function if you can think of it as a mathematical function so all such sequences are called dirac sequence so these are functions which actually converge to modifiers are an example of dirac sequence in other sense if you have seen the notion of approximate identity there are basically in ring theory or in uh, algebra where you talk of identity right existence of identity and so on right so where sometimes you may not have an exact identity but you might have what is called an approximate identity which means that you have a sequence okay and the generalization of a sequence is what is a net don't worry about it if you don't know so if you have a sequence such that any element uh, for any element a so this star is the algebra so there is an algebra here right? so there is a multiplication operation here so the star is that so a multiplied rho k is a that is a multiplied rho k a multiplied rho k is not a because if a multiplied by rho k is a then rho k is an identity so that is not happening what is happening is a multiplied by rho k converges to a as k goes to what or infinity right so this is a sequence so this product is not a but the limit of this product is a which is why it's called approximate identity so you get an you get you get a sequence which in the limit behaves like an identity okay so these uh, so these modifiers are examples of these anyway these are only to make the connections now don't worry about it what we need is this definition and uh, this equation 7.4 that we have defined here this sequence of functions which are called mollifiers which is what we are going to use so we have defined the notion of convolution and we have defined the notion of mollifiers with that we can get into the concept of regularization so suppose you have an open subset omega in rn so in this entire lecture omega will be an open subset of rn so if omega is an open subset of Rn and omega epsilon is the set of all points in omega such that they are of distance greater than epsilon from the boundary. So basically you have a you have an omega, you have an omega, you go an epsilon distance inside omega, and that region is what this omega epsilon is. Basically, all the points here are epsilon and distance away from the boundary of omega. Okay then uh, whenever f is l1 log then it's convolution with mollifier so you take any f you convolve that f with mollifiers you get a sequence f epsilon 
right and this f epsilon is c infinity of omega epsilon so you see you start with an l1 function and you convolve that with modifiers recall that rho epsilon is very infinitely differentiable compactly supported function so this convolution is infinitely differentiable in omega epsilon now what the what we need to observe here is you start with omega we come down with omega epsilon what is the reason of this omega epsilon is precisely the fact that if you recall the definition of the convolution operation the convolution operation was defined in rn you see the convolution operation here is defined in rn both the functions were in rn the convolution operation were defined in rn the reason is and this is important because what you are doing here is a translation of a function by a point, right? You are doing it. So there is a translation of the function involved here. So which means that when you take a function f and if you translate it by a point in Rn, then that translated uh, value should also, so the translated functions, uh, so the function should also be well defined in the translated point. So the translated point should also be in the domain of the function. So when you take an entire Rn, there is no such issue. Whereas when you restrict this to the to a proper subset of Rn, it could happen that this translated point can go outside the domain and the f is not well defined. Right? That can happen. So to make this well defined, you to, you should ensure that whatever point that you are translating should be within the uh, should be in the domain of the function so that is what that om omega epsilon that we have taken is uh, taking care of so once you fix an epsilon uh, corresponding to the modifier rho epsilon once you fix an epsilon you restrict your domain to a region of omega where if you translate by the epsilon part you still remain in the whole domain omega where f is defined okay so that's the idea behind it anyway so let's uh, look at the proof of this so uh, if you do a convolution how does it remain c infinity i've already uh, given as an exercise for the derivative proof let's see for uh, a quick l1 proof here and also see how this omega epsilon plays a role so you fix an x in omega epsilon so x is fixed in here so you look at the partial uh, ith partial derivative of f epsilon f epsilon is this convolved function so you look at the ith partial derivative of this f epsilon so look at this quotient then by definition this this is 1 over h rho epsilon so this is a rho epsilon convolved right convolved with f so by definition by the definition of convolution this is what you have right now this because the rho epsilons are supported in b epsilon of x there's a ball of radius epsilon and here they are centered at x because they have been translated by the x variable so they are originally centered at zero now they are centered at x because you have done a translation by x so then now you have this right so it's so this entire integral is supported in a ball of radius epsilon centered at x Now you take limit of h going to 0 both sides here. So that's how you get the partial derivative. So the partial, so the x side, the derivative of f epsilon, which is on the left hand side, if you take limit h going to 0, is limit h going to 0 of whatever you add on the right hand side. Now this is precisely, if you uh, take the limit, this is precisely the partial derivative of rho epsilon. Okay, this is the, the limit is over h here. Whereas the integral is over y here. So this is the partial derivative of rho epsilon. Okay. So we have done the interchange of the limit, the two limit process, a limit and integral over limit. Okay. So then we, uh, yeah, so this is precisely the partial derivative of rho epsilon convolved with f. So the partial derivative of f epsilon, so the is nothing but the partial derivative of rho epsilon convolved with it. this is very similar to the proof that i wanted you to do it as an exercise before okay so this i have already talked to you about so in general you have that any alpha partial derivative of f epsilon 
is the alpha partial derivative of rho epsilon convolved with f. So, which means that uh, f epsilon, so this, this is a typo, it's not u epsilon, this is f epsilon. This means that f epsilon is c infinity of omega epsilon. And that's precisely what we need to show. Okay, so this is f epsilon belonging to c infinity of c omega epsilon. That's what we have shown. So what you're seeing here is that, that if I take just an integrable function, I'm, I'm not even imposing continuity here, right? So if I, if I take such a function, I convolve with nice infinitely differentiable compactly supported function, then the convolution operation brings that function to infinitely differentiable. So this is what is called a smoothening process or what is called the regularization of process. This is the technique of regularization. So we start with a non-smooth function. You can convolve it with nullifiers to make it make the convolution a smooth function. So now for each f you see you have a sequence of functions which are in c infinity. Right? You have for each epsilon this is true. So you actually have a sequence of functions uh, for a given f which is in which is infinitely differentiable. Now that brings us this uh, concept of density that c infinity is infinitely differentiable function is dense in the continuous function uh, in the uniform convergence on compact sets topology right because we are in the rn situation so you see earlier we had seen some dense subsets of continuous function right in the previous lectures we talked about trigonometric polynomials pop, uh, super, and then talked about polynomials and so on here it's infinitely differentiable function so the extension of polynomials you can say is the power series uh, which is the analytic functions functions which admit power series this is uh, a bigger class than that this is actually a class of all infinitely differentiable functions and even that is dense in and that that class is dense in the in, in the space of continuous functions this you can see by the technique of regularization so you take any function uh, g which is continuous so you start with a function which is continuous in rn okay and you choose a compact subset of rn okay so then if you restrict the function to g then you see that g is uniformly continuous sorry restrict the function to the compact set k then you see that g is uniformly continuous on k because g is a continuous function on a compact set uh, now uh, because so by the uniform continuity for every eta there is a delta such that you can find a, uh, there is a delta which is independent of both x and k and eta right because of the uniform continuity fact so you you have this uh, you have this estimate right gx minus y gx eta so so this is by the continuity of g um, at y let's say okay So, continuity of uh, g at uh, at x, right? So, for all y in less than delta, and this you can do for every x in k. Okay. So, now what you do? Now you, uh, for each natural number, you choose epsilon to be one over m, right? Choose epsilon to be one over m, and you call that rho epsilon, where you put epsilon to be one over m. So this is the mollifiers that we had defined corresponding to epsilon equal to 1 over n. So you are looking at the mollifiers which are supported in a ball centered at 0 of radius 1 over m. Okay, take that and you do a convolution with the given function g. So you take gm to be g convolved with rho m. Now you see by definition gm is c infinity rn because g is in c of rn right yeah, if g is in c of rn so g the, so this convolution is also it says in c infinity of rn by the by whatever by we have already shown earlier that the convolution operation makes it infinitely differentiable so gm is c infinity of rn, RN. so now you start with uh, we, we need to show that this gm 
is precisely a sequence of C infinity functions which will converge to G. That way we have shown the density. right? But that convergence is in the, under the compact open topology. So for every compact uh, set, it converges uniformly. So which, we have, which is why we have taken a compact set K here. We will show that for every compact set K, you will have the sequence GM will converge uniformly to G. Okay. So we are we are actually giving an explicit sequence here, right? In terms of G. So once you give a G, you can use the G to construct a sequence which will converge uh, to it uh, uniformly on compact sets. So look at GM X minus GX for any X in Rn. You look at that. Now this GM is defined by a convolution, so the it becomes this integral here. Okay, and we also know that uh, the integral of the modifier is 1. So you can think of this g as g multiplied by 1, pointwise multiplication. So here the 1 can be written as integral over rho m. So, right. so that's what we have done here. So this is first term is by convolution. In the second term, we have replaced the 1 which is here with g. There is a 1 here that 1 as integral over rho m. So you have this equality and this is uh, less than or equal to you just put them together. So gx minus y gx into rho m dy integral of rho m. So this is supported in the ball of radius 1 over m. So it's fine. So for uh, hence for all hence for all x and k right we have to show this for every compact set k right so you take any compact set k for all x and k we know by the uniform continuity we had a delta so if i choose an m which is uh, bigger than 1 over delta so this ball can be uh, can be so 1 over m will be 1 over m will be less than delta so you can actually write this in terms of the ball of radius uh, uh, of radius delta so gmx minus gx is precisely this quantity from here because we have chosen m like this and in this in this uh, ball you know that this is less than eta so this is less than eta you have integral over this and this is precisely 1 because this is integral of 1 over m is rho m is 1 and 1 over m is a smaller now 1 over m is smaller than delta so this is 1 so this is equal to eta so gmx minus gx is equal to Eta. So you can make this. So for every x in k, you have found that gmx can be made as small as you want. There is an m that you can choose for which you can make this as small as you want, which means gm converges to uh, g. Now this choice of delta very dependent because by the uniform continuity and everything it was independent. So you actually have proved this uniform norm is less than eta for for the m chosen bigger than 1 over delta which means that gm converges uniformly on k okay so we have uh, shown what we had to show so you started with a continuous function you have an infinitely differentiable function which will converge to the function uniformly on every compact subset k okay now we can go further we can actually we earlier we did it in the full space Rn, right? Now, if I restrict it to some open, some open subset of Rn, then then you actually have that the infinitely differentially compactly supported function is dense in the compactly supported function under the uniform topology. Okay, so here we are proving we are, uh, we are taking we are saying that for any continuous function which is compactly supported you can get a sequence of infinite differentiable compactly supported function right so one is obviously kind of the idea that we have already seen is a regularization technique you take a function here you convolve it with some uh, appropriate mol uh, mollifiers then you can make it infinitely differentiable only thing we need to verify is the compact support is preserved and so on which again is will happen so let's see so let's take a g which, which is in cc omega and let's say it's support because it's compactly supported let's call it support as k okay so now one can extend 
this function cc omega one can imagine a function cc omega as a function of cc rn just by extending by zero why because it's compactly supported so outside a compact set it's anyway zero right so you can smoothly so without breaking any continuity or differentiability you can actually extend it by zero and this extended function will now be a compactly supported function in rn so you do that extension which is g tilde which is in the k it is the same function outside k you extend by zero so g tilde is a compactly supported function in rn from a g which is compactly supported in omega okay so now you introduce this you know you take this g tilde which is now in rn so there is no worry about convolution translation being outside domain and so on so you take g tilde which is in rn convolved it with the rho m right rho m is the 1 over m the ball radius supported in ball of 1 over m so you convolve with that we have seen in the previous theorem that we just showed that this convolution will be in c infinity and it will converge to g tilde uniformly on compact sets right from the previous theorem so now what is support of gm i have already given an exercise support of this convolution operation is support of this plus support of this closure of that support of rho m is b0 1 over m support of g tilde is k sum of that closure of that they are already closed sets so work so this will be compact because k is compact okay right even one of them is compact is enough so k is compact so we actually have gm is compactly supported and a c infinity function uh, so gm is compactly supported c infinity function because gm is c already in c infinity so we choose m naught such that one over m naught is less than distance of k from because k is a compact set contained in omega right that's how we chose it's a support of g so you take the distance from the omega complement okay and take one over m naught to be smaller than that distance then you can actually see that support of gm so once you choose one over m naught smaller than distance then this k plus k plus one over m it will will always be inside um, omega it has to be right that's how we have chosen m naught so for all for all uh, so for this m naught k plus b0 1 over m naught that is contained in omega so, so the support of gm is contained in omega so this gm is infinitely differentiable compactly supported function for all m bigger than m naught so you started with a g which is in cc omega you have obtained a gm which is in cc infinity omega and this gm converges to uh, g uniformly in its support k okay so that's what um, we had to prove okay so you see here we are in compact support topology so we really don't need the uh, uniform convergence on compact sets because the original functions are already compactly supported so this convergence will actually happen in the uniform topology so everything was happening inside a compact uh, set okay so this is so what is the technique here we had just uh, we had something in a proper set but we extended it to the whole domain right and then applied convolution and then brought it back to the proper subset by appropriate chopping off right okay so as a corollary you can actually see that we have already shown cc infinity is dense in cc omega and you can actually show that cc omega is dense in uh, c infinity omega in the uniform convergence on compact sets so actually the space of all infinitely differentiable compactly supported function is dense in the space of all continuous functions under the uniform under the compact open topology okay build as an exercise so in this more or less we have given you um, results about approximation theory in this so on so if you take the space of all continuous functions we have given what kind of sets are dense in 
this we have even given uh, precise uh, like using this using this regularization technique you can even obtain the sequences uh, smooth sequences which uh, with which you can uh, approximate a given continuous function and so on okay okay now let's move uh, into lp spaces to see the ten, some dense subsets of lp spaces Right, some useful dense subsets of LP spaces. So far, we have been seeing in the space of continuous functions, right? We can uh, en uh, enlarge these ideas to LP functions, LP spaces as well. So, just to recall the definition of a simple function, what is a simple function? A simple function is nothing but a finite linear combination of uh, what is called uh, the, uh, uh, the characteristic functions on measurable subsets. On, on measurable sets, right? So these are generalization of step function, but step functions are over integral. These are like non step function, but now they are defined on measurable sets, right? The condition is that the uh, measure of the set has to be finite, so it's a finite linear combination. This is so a simple function is a finite linear combination of um, finite of characteristic functions on measurable sets. And you must, if you have done a course on integral, uh, on uh, on measure theory and so on, you would have seen uh, seen this to, uh, seen the definition of simple functions. So what we uh, show here is that which you might have already seen, but just to recall uh, that the class of all simple functions are dense in the LP spaces. What are LP spaces? LP spaces are functions which are p-integrable, right? P-summable functions. So the simple functions are dense in LP for all P. So how do you see that? You take a, if you fix a P, you take a function f in LP. So to start with, we will choose a non-negative f. That's standard technique in measure theory. So you choose a non-negative f in LP. Then there is a result which tells you that there is an increasing sequence or monotone sequence of non-negative simple functions which will converge pointwise to f and they are all less than or equal to f okay this is a property that you do in uh, when you do measure theory and so on or Lebesgue measure at least so you have an increasing sequence of uh, non-negative simple functions uh, so f is non-negative so you actually get a non-negative simple function such that they approximate f from below right so they are all less than or equal to f and that's a pointwise almost everywhere convergence so given f we have a phi k which will converge to f pointwise now you look at this p some p mod uh, p estimate right so because mod phi k is also less than uh, mod f so we actually have this 2 power p mod f p here right so they are uh, bounded so now by the pointwise convergence and by the dominated uh, convergence theorem which is independent of k right so by dominated convergence theorem you actually have this uh, this convergence convergence in the p norm so phi k converges to p so phi k is a sequence of function which will converge to uh, which will approximate f in lp and these are all sequence of uh, sequence of simple functions so we have shown that at least for non negative function the simple functions are dense in non negative functions but this can be extended if you take any arbitrary f in lp you can decompose them as two non negative functions f plus and f minus both are non negative whatever argument we gave before can be done for both f plus and f minus you can choose sequence simple functions phi k and psi k such that their difference will converge to f like the way we showed here by this we have actually shown the space of all simple functions is dense in lp okay now we will show that the, the compactly supported continuous functions in omega is dense in lp now this is much better earlier we had shown earlier we had argued that these are dense in Continuous functions in omega under the unit you know, under the compact open topology. Now with the now in, in the P in the LP topology that is P norm, you actually have C C infinity omega dense in LP. 
that is every p integrable functions p summable function can be approximated by continuous functions which are compactly supported okay so for that what we do is that uh, you, you need to show it for every lp and we have already shown that uh, lp functions for lp functions simple functions are dense so if i show that this is dense in the class of uh, simple functions which is precisely the uh, simple functions in the p norm then i can one can show the density of that in LP, right? Because every every LP function can be approximated by simple functions, and simple functions are finite linear combination of characteristic functions on measurable sets. So it's enough to show that you can approximate a characteristic function with a measurable set f that can be approximated by a continuous function on compact sets. So we are going to do that. We start with a chi f for some f contained in omega, where f is bounded right a finite measure that's what we mean here so by the outer regularity property for every epsilon greater than zero there is an open set omega which contains f such that the difference between omega and f is like can be made as small as we want let's take epsilon over two okay so this is the outer regularity property so for any measurable set you can get a open set containing the measurable set such that the, the the extra region is as small as you want okay and by inner regularity you can get a compact set contained in the measurable set such that the extra region is as small as you want so f minus k so k is contained so you have a compact set contained in f you have an open set containing f okay both by the outer regularity and inner regularity now by now by Urizon lemma we can choose a continuous function g in omega which separates these two sets in the sense that you take a continuous function g which takes the value 0 in omega minus omega that is a bigger set open set omega and uh, that is outside the open set outside the open see you see there's an annular region here right there is an the k is contained in f and f is contained in little omega and little omega is actually contained in the bigger omega you know chosen like that right now what you do you choose a continuous function which is zero outside this little omega that's what it says here outside the little omega it takes the value one on the compact set k and between k and little omega it can take value between 0 and 1 right this, and this uh, can be done by urizon lemma urizon lemma tells you that you can actually find a function which can separate two closed sets right so omega complement is a closed set k is a closed set you are separating these two sets fine so now this g is a continuous function on uh, continuous function on omega with compact support right am i right uh, it's a continuous function is fine why is it compactly supported because it is uh, one on k and its non-zero values are all in uh, in uh, in uh, within i mean is uh, is contained in little omega Okay, and omega closure uh, being a bounded uh, closed and bounded set will be comp compact so it's actually a compactly uh, supported function in the capital omega so you look at this difference chi f minus g in the lp norm so this is precisely chi f minus g p norm so now you know that this is uh, this function is uh, this function is 1 g is uh, 1 on k and chi f is also 1 on f so k is contained in 1 so in the k 1 minus 1 becomes 0 so you actually have this integral is omega minus k of chi f minus g right now on a, this here the chi f value uh, is either 1 or 0 depending on whether it's in f or outside f 
whereas g is also a value between uh, g is a value between 0 and 1 so this quantity is actually less than or equal to 1 right what this pi f minus g of mod p is less than or equal to 1 so what you are left with is measure of omega minus k and measure of omega minus k is precisely epsilon in the way we have chosen here x1 by 2 x1 by 2 is 0 so measure of omega minus k is uh, precisely epsilon in the way that you can write it as uh, sum of these two these two sets omega minus f and f minus k okay so what we have shown is that uh, uh, chi f uh, can be approximated uh, you can uh, chi f that is the sorry the continuous function with compact support is uh, dense in the uh, characteristic functions of measurable f. Now we'll give an alternate proof of this function. Let f belongs to Lp and uh, fix an epsilon. Then again, by the density of simple functions you can get a simple function uh, which uh, which which can go to f as close as we want so let's take a phi which is less than which is in the distance of epsilon over 2 in the lp norm now phi is supported on a finite measure set right because it's a simple function that, that's how we are defined simple function so let's let uh, this capital f denote the support of phi and f is contained in omega phi is an omega now Lusin's theorem tells you that uh, you can approximate a measurable function by a continuous functions so there is a closed subset uh, gamma contained in f such that uh, phi is continuous in the in the uh, phi is continuous on the on the closed set gamma and the set where uh, and this difference of this f and the closed set is small it can be is like this so by losing theorem you can choose a uh, closed set gamma such that this happens that is f is continuous when restricted to gamma and f minus gamma is this quantity it can be made as small as we want so we are just making it smaller than this quantity you will see later later so f being a closed subset of finite measure set gamma is compact because it's a closed and bounded set so gamma is a compact set in omega so the so the phi that we have chosen uh, is um, so we make it zero outside gamma and call the fun call the g so g is a function defined so g is just an extension of phi by zero outside uh, gamma okay because it's compactly supported inside uh, it's supported on gamma so we make it zero outside so then it's a continuous function with compact support where the support is in gamma okay now this g satisfies this property that mod g is less than or equal to phi why that is how we define right because uh, g is precisely phi and uh, wherever it's wherever it was zero wherever it uh, we just extended it by zero so mod g is less than or equal to supremum of uh, phi that's how we defined it what we had done here is precisely this phi was a simple function right we had found a set on which when we restrict phi it becomes continuous and we just extended it by zero so g becomes continuous and you you have this estimate so now g minus phi is equal to the p so the p norm of g minus phi is precisely uh, phi in gamma complement uh, which is f minus gamma which if you write down the norm is precisely this right because measure of f minus gamma is this quantity so you take the sup norm what remains is the integral over f minus gamma which is precisely this which is epsilon over 2 so g minus phi is epsilon over 2 phi minus f is epsilon over 2 so g minus f is epsilon over is epsilon so we have shown that cc in uh, cc of omega is dense in lp of omega so you started with an f here you found a simple function 
you restricted the simple function to the region where it becomes continuous that was done by Lusin's theorem right and then we, we extended it continuously to the entire domain and that extension we did in such a way that uh, it, it can be made as close to phi as we want and hence by that we had density okay okay now we are we are going to show the density that, that in, in fact we are going to do much better earlier we had shown that c c of omega that is compactly supported functions on omega is dense now we are actually going to see that infinitely differentiable functions are dense but now we are going to do it in the rn because obvious reason that we are going to use regularization technique so infinitely differentiable functions are dense in lp in the lp norm <coughs> okay so now for each m you take uh, rho m the sequence of modifiers okay so for each m you take uh, uh, the 1 over m radius rollifiers i mean uh, the modifiers which are supported in the ball of radius 1 over m you start with an f then you look at the convolution fm which is rho m convolution with fm and you know this is in c infinity and we have already seen it many times before you take f and lp convolve with rho m, m that call it fm that is the infinity of rn we need to show it converges in the to f in the lp norm so uh, because rho m which is actually an infinitely differentiable compact supported function it says an, it's actually an l1 function by n's inequality fm will be in lp right because rho, rho m is in l1 f is in lp we have already shown that convolution not shown i have asked you to give it to it as an exercise that this convolution will be in LP so FM is in LP so you start with an LP you have a sequence in LP now right in fact sequence is in LP and this is actually a C infinity function so now we take the LP norm so by uh, the density of CC of RN we have shown that for any LP function, you can the CC of Rn is dense. We have shown earlier, so you can choose a G such that this LP norm is less than epsilon by three. Now, similarly, you there is a compact set K such that rho m uh, convolve with G is G because you already know that if you take any G rho m convolve with G will converge in the uniform compact sets topology uh, uniformly compact topology right sorry compact open topology right we have also shown that so we can also make this as small as we want we make this 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 quantity the choice of this you will see later you will see that right so you can if there is a compact set if you fix a compact set then you know that uh, you can get you, you know that this converge is uniform So once you choose, once you choose uh, uh, G like this, you choose a compact set K like this, then you can uh, compute the LP norm of this quantity. LP norm of this quantity will be whatever was integrant which is inside this. You take the sup norm of that, which is this, that is less than this, and what what remains is just the integral over K, and that is will so will get cancelled over this, so you get epsilon over three. So therefore, now let's compute the um, LP norm uh, of f min fm minus f. So this you just add and subtract these quantities. Rho m star f, you have uh, minus rho m star g, and rho m star. So fm is rho m star, right? So fm is rho m star f, which is this. So fm you add and subtract this quantity, and add and subtract g, right? And you take tri by triangle inequality, you have this inequality. This uh, last second term and third term, you have already noted down as less than epsilon by three. So you have two epsilon by three. What remains is this. This can be written as rho m star f minus g. Okay. So this you can compute 
by the n's inequality you you know that this is uh, just p norm of f minus g and one norm of rho n okay and that is epsilon uh, that is epsilon by p because f minus g was chosen to be epsilon by p this is uh, of in value one integral is one right so we have epsilon so we have shown the density of c infinity rn in lp rn now this was done in the entire domain rn because we are using the convolution property right now can we do this for a proper subset omega and that yes we can do we can actually show that compactly supported infinity differentiable function on a on a set omega right omega could be proper subset or entire rn that is dense in lp so for this why what we mean the cutoff technique cutoff function technique so basically have to extend it to rn and come back to omega that's the idea right so you take any function fp you know that these are all almost everywhere uh, functions so you can extend by zero and that extension by zero will still be in lp right though this might introduce discontinuity but that's not a problem for integrability right so you extend by zero and you get a um, you get again an lp function now but that lp function is now in rn and we have seen from the previous theorem that the f tilde can be approximated by convolution by regularization in the in the p norm because now you are in rn and these are all c infinity functions so you have this fms are all c infinity of rn right now what we need to do is somehow chop these functions fm which are c infinity of rn to make them sit in omega and also have compact support. So the sequence fm may fail to have compact support in omega because support of f tilde is not necessarily compact in omega, right? Because fx is f tilde is given in for entire omega here. So the so the support of f could be bigger than uh, bigger than omega. So to fix this issue what we will do is we will do a cutoff that is we, we are going to we are going to chop the function we are going to multiply the function by a suitable choice of cc infinity omega function okay and then we are going to somehow modify the function so how we are going to modify is the following recall that omega if it's an uh, whatever that set is omega omega can set I can write it as a uh, increasing union of or uh, nested sequence of compact sets, right? And like simple way to do is omega is an R, right? Then you choose the compact set uh, B zero M, and then you increase. Then omega is a union of J, right? Similarly, for any proper subset omega, you take the intersection of omega with uh, K M. You have uh, that set written as union of compact sets okay this can be done so <coughs> now what you do you choose you choose phi m's um, which are um, you choose by the by the Urizon lemma you can do that you can choose uh, functions phi m which are infinitely differentiable compact supports in omega such that phi equal to 1 on km right so this km is a set such that omega can be written as union of compact sets so phi is 1 on km and its value is between 0 and 1 so it's compactly supported in omega takes the value exactly 1 on km you can you can choose such functions right so if another omega can be written like this you can for each m here you can choose a function like this okay so now this uh, now what you do you multiply this phi m with uh, okay before that we have to extend it to entire rn because uh, f tilde was in these fms were in rn right so 
to extend by zero it will not introduce any uh, discontinuity or jump or break because phi m is compactly supported in omega so it's already zero outside a compact set so if you extend by zero outside omega complement you don't break anything you don't introduce any discontinuity or any jump so uh, phi m will, will will now be a continuous function in the continuous and infinitely differentially compactly supported function in the whole of Rn. Now you multiply this phi m with Sn that you had and call that capital F. Now this is a function which is cc infinity omega. So you see fm is a function which is c infinity by definition. fm is a function which is c infinity of c infinity of Rn and phi m is a function c in c c c infinity of omega extended by zero so it, that function extended by zero is c c infinity of rn so this is a product of two functions where this fm is c infinity of rn phi m is c c infinity omega c c infinity of rn sorry right so product will be c c infinity of omega right because outside omega it's going to be zero anyway so you can restrict it to omega so fm is a cc infinity of omega function so this is what we have done we have done a cutoff we have we started with just to repeat we had a function in omega we extended to f tilde to rn you got an approximation in rn and now with this fm you are you are multiplying by a uh, cutoff function this is called a cutoff function chopping function cutoff function it is uh, whatever is value non zero value it takes outside omega that is being compensated by zero by this function so it chops off those non zero values so this function is now and this is without breaking the smoothness so it remains in terms of differentially so fm is a cc infinity of omega so now uh, this fm if you see is uh, is equal to fm on sign because phi m was 1 that's how we chose phi m was 1 in the compact set km so the value of fm is little fm on km and mod of fm is also not equal to fm because phi was taking value between 0 and 1 so in rn this so fm has this property or relation with the little fm so fm minus f in the p norm is fm minus f tilde in the rn norm because anyway this was extending by zero fm was extending by zero f tilde was also extending by zero so this integral and, and p norm integral over omega is same as p norm integral over rn now in rn fm is phi m minus F, uh, fm and uh, you just add and subtract phi m f tilde so these two quantities are added and subtracted and they find any inequality we have this now this quantity fm uh, oh, this is not yeah sorry here so here this fm is less than or equal to one so right that's how we chose fm so this quantity is less than or equal to this and what you have this remains like this so if this first term goes to zero that is how we have chosen fm right it was converting the p norm so this can be made as small as we want okay and the second term also is here the only dependence on m is called phi m and the phi and phi m were chosen as uh, this phi m f tilde will convert pointwise to f tilde. So by denoting theorem, this will convert in the LP norm. Right? Because by the choice of phi m, that is how we chose. It was 1 on km and between 0 and 1. And uh, outside that, it was 0. Right? We extended by 0. So this will convert pointwise and is bounded by norm of f tilde. So the predominated converting theorem this converges to zero, so it can be made as small as we want. Right, so that proves the density of the compact supported function. In all these results, if you notice, we had 
Now, if you notice, we have never included the infinite infinity t equal to infinity in this entire lecture. Wherever we talked about LP spaces, we have never uh, included p equal to infinity case because, as you can see, uh, if you take this regularization technique for any function, which is in uh, take any f in L infinity, then this convolution will be a continuous function and its limit. Uh, in the uniform topology should be continuous right because l infinity will be the uniform topology will be continuous whereas we do have this continuous function l infinity so that is why it is not true for p equal to infinity which is why we had included we had we had excluded the case p equal to infinity because l because l infinity functions can have discontinuous functions whereas this regularization technique that we are doing here under the uniform topology will have to preserve continuity the limit has to be a continuous function that will not happen so you so in l infinity you have discontinuous functions and those discontinuous functions cannot be approximated by these functions okay that is the reason why the result fails for p equal to l uh, p equal to infinity case whereas for all other p you have this approximation so we have shown that you take even any lp you can approximate it by smooth functions nice smooth bump functions okay okay so that's about density and approximation of uh, continuous functions and lp functions okay, see you again in next lecture thanks a lot